Hi everyone, I'm Doug Black. I'm Editor-in-Chief at Inside HPC. And today on behalf of HPC industry analyst firm Hyperion Research, I'm talking with Ms. Yu Jun Lee. She is Director of HPC Business Development for the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, <clears throat> one of the world's most advanced chip manufacturers whose customers include major HPC chip designers, AMD, and NVIDIA, and Intel. Uh, Ms. Lee, welcome. Thank you, Doug. Good to be here. Great to be with you. Thanks so much. Um, so TSMC has declared high-performance computing uh, to be the company's fastest-growing market segment. In your view, uh, why is HPC growing so fast for TSMC? And what are some of the unique strategies the company offers chip designers competing in this market? Uh, sure, Doug. Let me first clarify that uh, TSMC's definition of HPC is broader than just supercomputing. HPC is uh, one of TSMC's four platforms. We put all of the computing intensive segments under HPC. That includes CPUs, GPUs, and AI accelerators, etc. With that definition in mind, Doug, yes, HPC is the strongest driver of TSMC's long-term growth. As our CEO, C.C. Wei, said to analysts in January, we expect HPC to be the largest contributor to our incremental revenue growth over the next five years. And you asked the question, why is HPC growing so fast? In fact, I think our customers, all our customers' customers, uh, probably have a better understanding. Uh, TSMC does have a good position as a leading foundry player to have a good cross-section of the industry in general. So let me share my view. Uh, first of all, HPC market growth in general. As we all know by now, there has been explosive growth of data, data generated from videos, gaming, online, shopping, e-commerce, uh, social networking, etc. Huge computing capacity is required to future analyze, decipher, and make productive use of that data. There are growing compute workloads that need to be fulfilled. In addition, the increasingly data-centric market demands most effective compute solutions. We're seeing intensifying competition and architecture war. x86 CPU has been the dominant compute architecture for the last few decades. The data growth and the machine learning momentum opened up a once-in-a-decade opportunity. Now we're seeing more competition in multiple architectures, x86, ARM and RISC-V, for example, we're seeing more competitions in not only CPUs, but also GPUs, AI, and network accelerators. Um, in terms of HPC players, we not only are seeing established companies broadening their portfolios, we also have uh, new players entering the field with their unique advantages and insights. Um, system houses, for example, are directly designing chips to meet their need to innovate fast. On the product side, we see standard products, we see semi-custom products, we see application-specific designs. That's a lot of silicon growth and content growth in addition to the unit growth. I think you asked, also asked uh, the unique strategies TSMC offers. Um, so we focus on what we do best, which includes technology leadership, manufacturing excellence, and customer trust. Um, first, you know, we have prepared our technology to meet the needs of HPC customers and to enable their products to be competitive. Um, HPC used to be actually pretty small as of five years ago. Now it has grown to be much bigger for TSMC, thanks to the joint efforts with our leading customers and to all of our customers uh, you know, using our leadership technology. We provide technology that has the best density, performance, and power efficiency. We also actually work with customers in the area of uh, joint technology design co-optimization to enable their products to have the best overall performance and power efficiency. And secondly, in addition to technology, we have a very large manufacturing uh, base and we provide manufacturing excellence through both yield and increasingly important capacity. And you know that solid uh, manufacturing foundation is common across all platforms, HPC or smartphone, or in fact, all the other platforms. And thirdly, we also have a um, unmatched design ecosystem uh, with hundreds of partners that put forward critical HPC IPs, such as Certis, 
or HVM advice to accelerate our HVC customers' time to market and time to value. So, you know, there you have it. Technology leadership, manufacturing excellence, customer trust, and a broad ecosystem. Along you know, with our customers who make good use of our technology, our HVC platform is growing. Okay, so uh, give us an overview, if you would, um, of the state of TSMC for HBC in terms of five nanometer and three nanometer process technologies. Mm -hmm. Sure, Doug. Um, so TSMC's five nanometer is in, in production today and three nanometer is in development, but is soon to enter production in second half of this year. So five nanometer, uh, in fact, M5 has entered its third year of production ramp and demand continues to be very strong. Uh, we believe our M5 has uh, proven to be the industry's most competitive leading edge technology. Beyond first M5, to further enhance performance, power, and density for the next wave of five nanometer products, mm -hmm. we've introduced five nanometer derivative technology nodes such as M4P and M4X. M4P is designed for easy migration from M5 with first product tape out in second half of 22. We also introduced M4X as an offering specifically optimized for compute intensive HPC workloads. We certainly can dive into that uh, uh, later. So with our continuous enhancement of uh, our five nanometer process, the demand for our five nanometer family will continue to grow in the next several years. And we expect five nanometer to be a large and long lasting node for TSMC. So you also asked about our three nanometer technology. Uh, N3 will use uh, FinFET transistor structure to deliver the best technology maturity, performance, and cost for our customers. Uh, technology development is on track and production is scheduled for second half of this year. And next up, we have N3E, which will further extend our three nanometer family with enhanced performance, power, and yield. Uh, we also observe a very high level of customer engagement and interest at N3E. The volume production is uh, scheduled for one year after that of N3. Uh, we believe and uh, our N3 family will be another large and long lasting node for TSMC. Okay. So the, the, the five nanometer N4X process uh, that's tailored for HPC, as you mentioned. Uh, so by this, we assume you mean that customers like AMD and NVIDIA can develop their own chip designs on top of that platform? Um, yes, Doug. N4X is the newest member of uh, TSMC's five nanometer family, tailored especially for high performance computing customers. Again, our five nanometer started with M5, followed by M5, uh, M4, sorry, and then we also introduced M4P and M4X technologies. Um, in the past, in the HPC field, we customized uh, you know, our seven nanometer and six nanometer technologies for HPC products by request only. N4X is the first of our HPC focused technology with the X designation representing the ultimate performance and maximum clock, uh, clock frequencies. So as you can see, N4X is uh, TSMC's HPC centric technology. In the last few years, we've had tremendous amount of uh, technology learning by analyzing the unique attributes of HPC customers and by working closely with our leading edge customers. What we found over the years is that relative to mobile products or smartphone products, HPC products tend to have higher power, larger die sizes, higher voltages to drive higher operating frequencies. And in addition, the utilization of HPC chips is also generally much higher, leading to larger percentage of dynamic power relative to static power. Um, so these are a few uh, attributes that have uh, technology implications for us. So with that understanding, we then optimize our technologies accordingly. So M4X as a result is the first generally available instance of our HPC centric technology. Um, so for products that require high performance, high drive current, where dynamic power dominates the power envelope, M4X is the way to go. CPU and GPUs are just some examples. Okay. Um, can you dig in a little more on, technically on, on the M4X? Uh, you know, we hear about metal insulator, metal capacitators for power delivery um, under extreme performance uh, loads, uh, characteristics like that. 
Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, the, what sets M4X apart is the optimization of the FinFET transistor and back end of line process for overdrive conditions. And more specifically, M4X has optimized the transistor performance as a function of the voltage, uh, especially for you know, high performance computing products with a slight trade off in leakage current. And next, we've also optimized uh, you know, the back end, the targeted back end metal layers, uh, um, which tend to be more important for HPC products with larger die sizes and also higher, higher voltage conditions. And thirdly, um, as you mentioned, super high density metal insulator, metal capacitor are optimized for most effective and reliable power delivery. HPC products tend to have higher power and more challenging LDIDT control. And that can benefit a lot more from having a higher density on die capacitance. So those are the key features, uh, technical features of M4X, Doug. Okay, great. And um, what can, what's the expected performance of the M4X over previous platforms? Yeah, M4X offers a performance boost of 15% over that of M5, and, or actually 4% over the even faster M4P uh, at 1.2 volts. That's our basic technology metric. We expect customers to apply their design innovation and to also jointly optimize uh, uh, their products on our technology with us to achieve a much better and higher performance of M4X uh, with real products. Okay, and um, tell us a little bit about the reception to the N4X um, uh, from your customers, and when when can we expect to see products um, becoming available on the new process? Uh, sure, uh, we're already engaging with customers. We're seeing great interest uh, from high performance customers. Um, I can't comment on customer names, uh, Doug, but this production for M4X is scheduled for first half of 23. You will see products based on the new process by 2024, if not earlier. Okay, so looking ahead um, at the, the TSMC roadmap, what are some strategic highlights we can expect to see from the company looking out through, say, um, 2025? Sure, Doug. Um, through 2025, uh, we believe HPC will continue to be the strongest driver for TSMC's growth. I think we can expect to see expanding TSMC HPC customer base, increasingly diverse and broader set of HPC customers. Uh, we can also expect to see more HPC focused technologies uh, from um, our uh, broader portfolio. In addition, uh, we can expect to see more use of uh, TSMC's advanced packaging uh, under the brand name of 3D Fabric for heterogeneous integration. Uh, we didn't really touch on that point earlier. If you have time, let me expand it here. Okay, great. All right. Um, so when I talked about the growing opportunities in HPC and the intensifying architecture battlefield earlier, one may wonder who may win out eventually in my view, there will be a healthy competition, which is good for the end users and for the overall market. Weaker ones may fall out over time, but increasingly, I believe there will no longer be one size fit all in the computing landscape with the growing workloads. CPUs may be good at certain workloads. GPUs may be good at others. Some may benefit more from ASICs. Some may require more programmability. New DPUs may, re may be more effective for certain workloads. For technologists, heterogeneous integration will become even more critical through 2025. It will go beyond today's um, dominant configuration of logic plus HPM in the HPC field. There will be more CPU plus accelerator type of heterogeneous integration in the package. TSMC as a horizontal platform level player will provide the solid foundation to unleash our customers' innovation. One more point to add, uh, in addition to the extended heterogeneous integration of compute elements, I believe we'll see more and more smarter integration within advanced packaging by moving or adding additional tiers of elements that used to be further away on the PCB board. We already see HBMs on the package. We should see more 3D memory stacking over time. 
optical engines may be integrated for much lower energy per bit. Voltage regulators might be integrated for better power efficiency, just to name a few examples. Um, TSMC's HPC platform is built on our long-term R&D in advanced technology and our close engagements with many HPC customers in recent years. So with our strong portfolio in both leading edge technology and 3D fabric advanced packaging technology, manufacturing excellence, and unmatched design e enablement ecosystem, we're ready to support our customers' innovations for many generations to come. So I made a few points. In short, uh, to answer your question, Doug, through 2025, you will see HPC to be the strongest driver of TSMC's growth. You'll also see TSMC expanding HPC customer base, offering more HPC optimized process technologies, and growing use of TSMC's 3D fabric to enable heterogeneous integration of not only different compute elements, but also smarter integration of elements further away on the board today. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you very much for that update. Um, so we've been with TSMC's Yu Jun Lee on behalf of Hyperion Research. Thanks for spending time with us. Thank you, Doug. Good talking to you. Thanks.